Good morning, One Heart Church. It's hard to imagine that uh, our world has changed so much that I'm now coming to you by way of video, but I hope it's only for a few weeks and I hope that we're back into normal life before too long. But obviously we live in unprecedented days with great challenges and nothing that the Bible doesn't speak to. And yet at the same time, it is uh, overwhelming at times. And certainly for me, being in a voluntary quarantine for uh, now day 12, it has been a very long time, but I know that God is going to continue to watch over and protect us, and uh, certainly it has been my choice to want to be wise and making sure I didn't expose anybody to anything that perhaps I encountered while traveling abroad. Now today, we obviously uh, have a lot of ground to cover in a short period of time, and uh, it's not my first choice to be doing sermons by video, but it is my first choice to communicate with the people I love, and so to One Heart family and friends... My prayer is that what I share with you today will be encouraging and helpful to you and a blessing to you. I want to express my appreciation for our entire ministry team, as well as many of our lay leaders who have helped meeting different needs, distributing packets to our children, uh, preparing for other activities that will be going on as we anticipate these days that we're in, uh, looking right ahead. And then also I want to uh, certainly uh, do a shout out to our children to be aware this coming Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock, I have a Zoom with all of you. And I look forward to having a chance to interact with you and talk to you and share with you about all that uh, God's been teaching me during this time. Now, during this particular message, uh, I want us to look at something very clearly that I hope will be helpful to you. Uh, and it has to do with preparation for the future. And Jesus spoke specifically to this uh, when he was preparing for the cross. And so let's take a moment, let's pray, and join me in prayer as we turn our hearts towards the Lord. Father, thank you that today we can bring our hearts before you. Today's message, Lord, was actually written by you. Uh, words that bring comfort to us, uh, and bring direction to us, and give us guidance in the midst of uh, unprecedented times that we're living in here in America. And so I pray you bless this message. Bless every member and every friend of One Heart and every other person who might watch this broadcast. May it be an encouragement to them. And may they realize that the God of all the universe is watching over his children this very day. I bless you and I praise you and I thank you for the opportunity to be able to share with our church family. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, one of the first things you ask yourself is, uh, why now? What is this? How long will it last? And it's interesting because in John chapter 16, Jesus begins to prepare the disciples for something that they were asking the same question. What is this? How long will it last? Because Jesus was foretelling his death. He was obviously trying to also teach them that the resurrection was going to be part of the story. But they were only dealing with the what is. And what is was that Jesus was saying, guess what? Life is going to be different. Things are going to change. And they couldn't even grasp a lot of what he was saying. And by the time you get into the latter part of John 16, we find ourselves in a text that I hope will be helpful and encouragement, encouraging to you. And so I want to read to you out of John chapter 16, Jesus' words, beginning in verse 31. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, an hour is coming, and it's already come for you to be scattered, each to his own home, each to his own home, and to leave me alone. And yet I'm not alone because the Father is with me. These things I've spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. What great, comforting, assuring words these are from the Lord Jesus. What does he say to us? He says to us very clearly that the time will come when we do face tribulation, that we will face challenges, that we will find ourselves inundated with information. And uh, for most of us, we have been on overload regarding information, and we have watched uh, as people have responded in different ways, and we certainly have watched as uh, the tragedy of this virus has spread across the world. And so today, as we think about that, Jesus had to have something in mind. He had to be saying to each one of those who were gathered around him, do not do not be anxious about these things that you're encountering because the reality is that what you're seeing is in the world you'll have tribulation. And it's interesting that Jesus said to each one of them, you'll go to your own home. And the reality is most of us are in our own homes. 
the places God provided for us, apartments or homes or whatever other means that we would live in. And, and those those means are places where we find refuge and strength. And I walk around my house and uh, I look at photos that remind me of blessings and uh, uh, little grandchildren I don't get to see right now and a wife I haven't seen uh, since March the 1st. And as far as being able to interact and actually personally talk, I sit down with her. And so it's different when they drive up in a car and they talk through the window uh, for a second versus uh, being sitting on your couch and talking to you. And so obviously the tribulation that Jesus is speaking of here is what what will be a part of the entire uh, end times of, of what we know by way of biblical history. And so what we know is this. We know that Jesus makes it very profoundly clear that the most important thing we can have is courage in the midst of challenges. And I want to encourage you today uh, to to find yourself in a place where you're not overwhelmed by all these circumstances. The challenges are not coming at you in such a way that you go, wow, I don't know what I can do. Because here's what I do know. God is with you. He's watching over. And we need to give assurance to our, to our students and to our children, to our older adults that uh, we're there for them. And uh, it's quite intriguing to uh, be in this particular chapter of our lives because it's an unprecedented time. Uh, and when unprecedented times come, our number one source of strength comes from God's Word. And God's Word speaks to everything that we'll ever face in life. And if you read John 16, which I would encourage you to do uh, before the day's over, th this was Jesus setting in motion uh, what he is about to pray, that it's his high priestly prayer in John 17. And so when he says, in this world you will have tribulation, he was telling the disciples, you know what? This is the reality. The reality is that you're going to face things that you never dreamed you would. None of us just a few months ago would have ever dreamed that we would not be able to have church. We would never dream that if we walk into a store, we're exposed to a virus. And we would have never dreamed that things could live on a surface for two to nine days. We, you know, The other thing is, we would have never dreamed we would have gained so much information about a particular virus that has inundated the airways with a lot of material, a lot of information, and frankly, quite a bit of fear. And so for the disciples, they were afraid. And Jesus had been speaking to them with such clarity that you would have thought any of them would have got it. But the truth is, the Bible says they did not understand it. And finally, they said, now, Jesus, you're talking in a way that we can understand. And so he says to them, each will go to his own home. I have the Father. I'm never alone. And what he was trying to say to each one of us was, the Holy Spirit will be with us no matter what. And comfort us, encourage us, bless us, and give us something to hang on to that will be and encouragement to each one of our lives. And so today, as you think about your own journey of faith, remember this. I believe that we as a church family will come out stronger on the other side of this than we were before. Because what trials do, what difficulties do, they, they refine our faith. They refine our faith and they direct us towards something that is greater. And so for me personally, now I've been meditating on a lot of different texts. Obvious in Philippians where it says, be anxious for nothing. Uh, in other texts, in Psalm 56, where it says, What time I'm afraid, I'll trust in thee. And honestly, what I have uh, contended with a lot during this time is just the solitude, and but also rejoicing in a blessing of being healthy and not feeling bad and, and uh, trusting that God has watched over me and all of our mission team who, who've been on mission uh, to different parts of the world. And so I thank the Lord that he has uh, done that. And at the same time, uh, I'm speaking to our church family today, and I, I want to share with you exactly what Jesus wrote in my heart in preparation for today. Because the reality is, there are some people who are super spiritualizing all that's transpiring. There are some people who are probably overextending prophetically how this connects into um, end times. There are others who um, who are oblivious to the reality that we are facing something that could be a deal changer, at least in the immediate future. And we see that with the proliferation of different cases across our nation and around our world. And so as you look at it, you realize that we can we can overextend ourselves or we can ignore everything or we can learn something that is most critical for our lives and our journey of faith. And so today, as we look at this, I want you to I hope that I can anchor your heart in some thoughts that will be helpful to you, uh, because when Jesus begins to speak to them, he's making it very clear. He's making it clear that what they need to understand is there is an hour coming in which they will face giant challenges. And we are facing those kind of hours right now, challenges that we didn't anticipate 
uh, in all likelihood. And no one would have thought when they were opening gifts at Christmas time uh, this past Christmas that we would also be uh, facing something of this kind of uh, consequence just a few months later. And so I want you to, to um, make note of these things that I share with you and let them become anchor points for you. Uh, and let them be point, come points of application for you as you journey through these days. Now, I want to say to you also that we will be coming to you by way of email, uh, by way of communication in different formats like text, as well as different moments where we will come and uh, share with you things that we know are most critical uh, to be an encouragement to you. And uh, I want to assure you that there's no one on our ministry team, and there's no well, certainly you're not in your pastor's heart. There's not a doubt. There's not a doubt in my mind that God will strengthen us and equip us for this because no weapon formed against us will prosper. That is our heritage. That is what we get from God. And so today, as you think about that, I just want you to take a few moments. And uh, certainly if you're gathered together with your family or you're there by yourself and uh, you're listening to this broadcast and you're uh, thinking through this and you can see that uh, in my heart, there's great assurance that God's with us, that he's watching over us. Uh, but if you're having some fear and doubt, let me just assure you that there is a way to conquer those things. There is a way to arrive at a conviction that will guide you through it all. And so my prayer is that this broadcast that you're getting by way of our website will be a profound and distinctive moment of encouragement to you after a number of days of great challenge. So let's think about this. So Jesus has talked to them in John 16 in different ways. They don't get it. And then all of a sudden, they begin to, it starts to click. The, the things begin to click and they start thinking, wait a minute now. So you're saying to me that, that I will endure some challenges. I will go through some things. In fact, Jesus uses the word tribulation, which tells you something. Most of our challenges aren't little small things. They're big things. They're big issues. And so as you think about that today, I want you to think about three very distinctive things that I hope will be a great encouragement to you. In fact, I hope you'll write them down. I hope you'll write them down and you'll use them as a basis of moving forward in the days to come. The first point I want to make to you is this. When Jesus begins to teach, he does not do it in the third person. He speaks directly to what it is that he knows they need to learn in anticipation of him going to the cross. And here's what I want to challenge you to think about. We can anchor our hope to the news broadcast, we can anchor our hope to the medical cures that are they're working towards, and I pray they find one quickly. We can anchor our hopes to a lot of things, but you and I have one anchor, and that anchor is Jesus. And so the first thing I want to challenge you to do is anchor your heart in Jesus. I mean, let it go deep inside that Jesus is with you, watching over you, taking care of you, and that he will absolutely meet you at the point of your need. And so when you anchor in him, here's what happens. He becomes a refuge and a reservoir. He's a refuge in the midst of difficulty. And he's a reservoir of resource for each one of our lives. And so you start walking through something and you go, wait a minute now. Jesus is with me. And it's exactly why the scripture said, be anxious for nothing. Because he is with us. And so you start anchoring your heart in Jesus. And he starts doing something that is profound and powerful. And what Jesus was saying was, I am with you. Don't get tight. Don't get overwhelmed. Trust me, I will guide you. He is our anchor, and we anchor our hearts in Jesus. But Jesus is saying more than that, because what he's saying is, you're going to have tribulation, you're going to go to your own home, and out of your own home, you're going to arrive at one distinctive con conclusion, one conclusion that will be the key to everything, and that is, be courageous. Be courageous. And if you look at Joshua chapter 1, you realize that what, what, what is the central message of God to Joshua? Be courageous. Moses is gone. You have to be courageous. You have to step into your opportunity. And that's where I want you to see point number two. First of all, you anchor your heart in Jesus. But secondly, you anticipate opportunities. There are people who are looking for an answer. They're looking for something to hang on to. And they're looking for a blessed hope. Not something that's temporary. Not something that just is for the moment but something that would carry them forward through all their life. I want to ask you to think about who is it that could be your one that you could reach out to, you could share with, that you could tell them that while you're walking through this, fear does not rule in your heart. Faith rules in your heart. You see, the reality is faith and fear can't live in the same place. I've said this for many years at One Heart. 
If we choose fear, we miss a lot of opportunity. If we choose faith, we experience everything God intended for us. Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. My challenge for you is simply this. Anticipate your opportunities. It could be that it could be in the moments that you are find yourself at home, which we all recognize that. Quite intriguing for me in my neighborhood. I've seen more people walking in the neighborhood in the last 12 days than I have seen in the last 12 years. It's staggering to see how many people are out riding bikes and doing other things. And it's our opportunity to convey hope and purpose and meaning to each one of them. So my challenge for you is, watch this, think about this for a second. What Jesus is saying was, you anchor yourself in me. If you anchor yourself in me, then you're going to anticipate the opportunities that I put before you. And we don't live by accident. We live in this time even as a, a testimony to the reality of God at work in our lives. And so I want to encourage you to think about how you can anticipate opportunities that are coming your way. Because as they come your way, one thing you'll know for certain, they're there for a reason. God wants to work inside of you. But Jesus goes on to say that when we are in the midst of this and we, we need courage, he has done one thing that's most powerful. He's overcome the world. In other words, there's nothing that's going to get in, in, in front of us that he has not already filtered through his love. And that brings me to my third point and the final point of this Sunday morning message. Obviously, quite shorter than our regular Sunday service, but I was hoping that each one of you could listen to this from beginning to end. And whether you had children or whether you're home by yourself, I was hoping during these few minutes it might be an encouragement to you to realize that we love you, we're blessed by you, and we thank God for you. So, let's think about it for a moment together. First of all, we anchor our hearts in Jesus. Secondly, we start anticipating opportunities God puts before us. And then as we anticipate those opportunities, we do exactly what Jesus said. We affirm our faith. We acknowledge that we know the God who has set in motion our entire lives, who knew us before we were ever born in our mother's womb. That same God is going to affirm our faith today. Stay strong in your faith. Stay rich in your faith. Stay wise in your faith. Stay committed to your faith. Do not let anything deter you. No weapon formed against you can prosper. Don't forget that. Keep in mind, you take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. You yield yourself in faith. It's the assurance that we have that God's with us. And so today as you watch this, my prayer is that you will conclude just like I'm going to with a word of prayer. And in your own home, in, a, in the silence of your own heart or from your own voice, you will voice a very simple prayer that will wrap together exactly what Jesus said in John 16 and will set in motion how you'll live out this week. We don't know what tomorrow holds. Jesus made it so clear. Take okay, no thought for tomorrow, for today has enough trouble of its own. And that's the reality. And I would encourage you, uh, just as Eric Roger shared in our church group meeting uh, this last Sunday when we were having church, uh, he made this, this very strong encouragement. Be careful how much media you take in. Because the truth is, if you take in too much media, you may not take in too much ministry. And ministry says we allow God's word to speak to our hearts and lives. So my encouragement to you is, don't be overwhelmed by all the things you're hearing. Trust him. Ask him to watch over. Be wise. Be wise. Be prudent. And uh, as you are doing that, uh, one lesson for sure. We have learned certain things that are key to who we are. And that is that we need to live trusting Jesus every day. And so as I close this, time together with you. I want to say to you, I love you. I thank God for you. Our entire staff team thanks God for you as well. And our prayer is that what you have heard today will just be a point of assurance, a point of reflection, a point of motivation, and a point of courageous intent. Because Jesus said, be courageous. And that's exactly who we're going to be. But let's pray together. Ask God to bless you as you watch this video. And we'll be coming to you at different times with different messages. My prayer is this message will speak to your heart with great clarity and encourage you in a great way. Let's pray together. Father, thank you that today in these few moments, we've had a chance to be able to look at exactly what Jesus said. Jesus brought it to his disciples with very distinct, clear direction. And his clarity was this, that in this world, we will have tribulation. But indeed, through Jesus, we've overcome the world. And it's not by accident Jesus said everyone will go to their own home because we have been sent to our homes. And in our homes, we find the presence of the Holy Spirit. We find the comfort of knowing God's word can speak to us at any moment. And we also realize, Lord, that we can take away from this particular moment exactly what we've learned today. We anchor in Jesus. We anticipate the opportunities you're going to put before us. And with, as we do that, we affirm our faith in you. Jesus, 
we give this Sunday to you, this most unique Sunday in my entire life, and certainly in my entire ministry, never would I have ever dreamed that technology was the only way to communicate with hundreds of people that I love. But I pray that this message sinks deep in the hearts of every person. And we bless you and praise you in Christ's name. Amen.